<laughs> wind it back. <laughs> they're usually there. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so start over. You know, you and I have talked about this before in, in the, at the meeting and saying like, there's nothing that's stopping us there from putting a proposed trail there eventually, or not allow or allowing people to walk through. There's nothing stopping it, but. We're not going to be on the planning board in the, in the selectmen forever. So what is going to stop that? What happens in 10 years from now where we're not around anymore? And then it's just like, well, the, you know, the rec committee and the, wants to put a path through there. Um, as I've said before, is I think that there are two issues for the town. Is one is <clears throat> let's complete the project and get it operating and then see what the site is like is if once once it's up and operating and we have where the trucks are coming in and out and and the traffic merges and stuff we'll have a better idea about that the other issue i've had with this all along is the people in berwick last november voted on two articles one was to put the fire station at the estimate school and the other was for a six million dollar bond to build a fire station and renovate the police station. I don't want to take any of that money that's dedicated to the fire station and police station and use it to design, permit, engineer, and build a walking path. And we don't have to. That's why. <laughs> and we don't have to. And that's why I came up with, on my own, and these guys don't know this, and I, I proposed it to you, and I showed it to the town uh, planner, the two conditional uses of approval. All remaining green space on this property will be left to the town of Berwick in perpetuity for future, re future recreational opportunities unless the applicant receives conditional use approval for another use. And the second one is all rights of way onto this property from Sullivan and Logan Street can be restricted for motorized vehicle use. However, no restriction will be placed on pedestrians and or non-motorized vehicles. So that's basically saying that you can walk through it. There's not going to be signs up that's saying stay out, private property, or you could ride your bike through it on, on both of those. But then it also leaves up the green space. And we talked about the green space behind it. And we talked about maybe the town wants to put uh, a solar array out there. Then the town comes back they're going to have to come back anyway and get condi conditional use approval for a solar array back there. But we can do that. And if, and if so everybody in the town wants that, which we would be all about, I, I would be all about. Let me just say that. I don't know why there so, isn't a solar so, array so, on so the roof why, of why the take, Why take the open space and list it as recreational in perpetuity, unless there's a conditional use, and let's just say it, it's open space until a conditional use has been passed for whatever reason. But I and did. let the townspeople decide then. I did. If they want recreation or solar array or training or whatever. That was the second part of that, unless the applicant receives conditional use approval yeah. for another use. Unless. So why, again, why list it as recreational route use in perpetuity? Because it's is town rather property. Rather than just open space. I understand. You need to stand you, you, up at the microphone. Yeah, Terry just wants everybody to go up to the microphone. So, I understand the point. What Tom is trying to say is that why would we classify it specifically as recreation instead of just leaving it unclassified? Um, yeah, because, well, that, that, that because that's why what the condition we, is that we want to put in it. And so, one to your point, because you keep bringing this up that the town voted, the town voted. The town voted and voted a certain amount of money is your problem as a selectman. You as an applicant coming to us with a plan is our problem. Our problem isn't the vote or how much money you have to do this. When Portsmouth Housing Authority came to us, we didn't know what their budget was, not our concern. Our concern was maintaining public access to this property, which they were glad to do and did include in their plan. So the vote and the money, that's your problem. You guys were voted into your positions and tasked with this. You get paid to do this. In, in the, in, our in, problem I, we're, is this paid, is- We're getting paid to do this, as you said. Yeah. Is, and what we're saying is we consider our best use of not using any of that money to do this not thing. asking to use that it's money right. i'm not asking you no, and, and tom and, and in the email i said a proposed trail a just a proposed trail 
not asking the town to spend any money right now in proposing a trail because you know even Dennis came in here and said can't we get recreational funds or or, or grants for this yeah absolutely we could do this isn't something that we're gonna do tomorrow or next year could be three or four years from now that we would do that we would find those grants to spend five thousand dollars to have somebody come in there and put a little gravel path going up around the backside that's so, fine. I just want to make sure that everything behind it and along the side is just reserved for, fine, open space for the town of Berwick. Open space. Just you, the way it is now. You it's can't open put anything space else. Now. You have to come back for a, a conditional use application for a solar array or for a dog park or for a playground. But then also we're not putting up, we're not stopping people from just what we don't want people walking in that driveway from Sullivan, but we're not stopping them from doing it. I don't see an issue with people just, we're not gonna have droves of people walking in there. Just don't restrict the public access. That's it, those are the only two things. I will rephrase it and say, I will re if I make the motion for those conditional uses, I will rephrase it and just say open space instead of recreational use. Uh, continue just the way it is right now. We can walk in it. I walk on it almost every single it, day. It, if it's the same as it, it is now. The second, your second part of your of your proposal is is access from Logan Street and Sullivan Street be you no know, available for bicycles and pedestrians is. We've talked about this at the meetings a couple times about the access coming onto Sullivan Street. It being as narrow as we can make it in order to restrict the impact on the wetlands. And the fire chief and the engineers and the architects all say that there should not be pedestrians on that road. Again, is let's wait till this is project is over with and operating and then we can come back and revisit this but is, these, is, these two, I don't trust it if can, I, can I can I finish yeah. <laughs> it is <clears throat> when the construction is going on the site's going to be closed to sense. everybody anyways so nobody's going to be able to access it during the construction so if nobody's going to be accessing it during the construction why can't we wait until it's all over with and operating before we go in there and try to figure out where uh, as i said i don't want to restrict total total restriction on this i want it to be safe and i want it to be economically feasible for the town is the is the passage onto Selva Street going to end up being one-way traffic only it's I emergency think. vehicles only either it is ways. the the, they want it wide enough so that there are occasions when a truck would be leaving and yeah, coming. The, the fire chief is going to use it how he needs to use it under the well, circumstances I'm, I'm that are there. From the design, so. as, as I recall, twenty feet that it was wide. Going, they're yeah. supposed to be coming in from Logan Street, going into the the double door bays, and then they would exit through Sullivan Street. So I'm just wondering if it's going to no, be that, changed that, that, yeah, that would that would depend on where they're coming from, yeah. returning okay. from. So, so it's going to be going to and from traffic. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, if you notice, that, if you awesome. notice how the fire department works now, if they're going out to do an inspection for a fire pit or something like that, they take a truck with them. Yeah. So there's always a truck going out, and the only reason they do that is we only have two people at the station, and they need a truck, yeah. and two people can't be out in their private vehicles and then have something happen. So there are going to be a lot of times that truck is going to go out and come back one truck because that's their normal operating procedure and uh, i know the chief is going to use it under emergency if he's really got to get out and get back to, to retool or do something he's going to use it how he sees best fit and safety is obviously a concern of his um, would it be okay to make the uh, reevaluation of the walking uh, or their pedestrian use um, more uh, more contingent on like the occupancy well as, that's as opposed be. to that would be that, that would be on the conditional use, use. Yes. yeah but I, I, for, to tom's point he wants to see once it's all built and and cut out and how it's going to lay you know in terms of you know is it going to be safe is it going to actually accommodate you know foot traffic in a reasonable way something like that you know um can we revisit that once the building's up and then come back to it as an occupancy permit issue. 
No. Like make that a condition of the occupancy. That's what the condition yeah, is. Yeah, that's what a condition okay. is. So, but, 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 and then at the that, same time, but you know, we, we have look at look at the current fire station. Look at this downtown Dover fire station, downtown Portsmouth, downtown right. Ro Rochester. They're all crossing a, a, a sidewalk. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm sure if you ask most of those fire chiefs and firemen, they would prefer not to. Um, Is I've been at, I've been at you know I, I saw the pictures that were dropped off about various fire stations. I've been at the Kennebunk fire station when calls go out. It's in the, the, the fire station in the bottom of the town hall. Is that's where it is. That's why it crosses there. Is I've been down there for political action, you know, campaigns and stuff. While people have been down there and. It's not pretty when people are out there and they're trying to get emergency vehicles out. Well, yeah, we should have put it, it on Cemetery Road well, then, but we, well, we're not, so we're going to have to deal with people. Can we I ask a question? Because <laughs> the first time I understand the planning board saw the concept plans was back in May, May 2nd. They came to that planning board meeting and they did the presentation. The issues that are being raised here today and they, they were raised on October on uh, August 15th are the very same ones that were raised back on May 2nd when the sketch plan came in. What level of thought has Port City Architects in the building committee put into these very issues that were raised since May 2nd right up to con concurrent? Has anybody given any thought as to how that could fulfill page 37, a trail hub condition and policy action item in our in our comprehensive plan. Has anybody put any thought we'll in whatever? Talk about else? access at every meeting, Frank. Yeah, but we're you, not, you're you've not been at you've been that. at several of the meetings <laughs> when we talked about. No, you you went to the May 2nd meeting and you came to the August 15th meeting. That those are the two times that presentation has been put in front of the planning board. And in all it, fairness to to the planning board. You know, there, as far as I know, there have been no discussions with the planning board in between that window of time. So you may have had your building committee and you may have had your quarterly yeah. meetings with Landry French and this, that, and the other. So at those meetings, did anybody in Landry French, Blaze, Port City, Fire Department speak to the issues that were raised central? The yes, we have. And, and, and okay, we, what we, are they then? And, and we, we, we raised these issues because they were brought to us, and we came to the same consensus and conclusion that we have now, is that is we don't see an easy way of allowing this during construction or after construction. And, and after construction, it has to do and, with after that, con and after construction, we will revisit it. Is that's what we have said from the start. Okay, is we, when we when we brought this forward a year ago of using the Estabrook property, it's been more than a year because we had our first public hearing in the beginning of September on it, and everybody got well, not everybody. We sent out the mailers to everybody, let them know it was presented then about what we were proposing between the cemetery road and the Estabrook site. If these issues were brought up at that meeting. It's not like we have been working in a vacuum here. But it's been public knowledge for more than a year that it was going into the Estabrook school site. I asked and the question. One of the questions that was brought asked to me at one of the meetings was, why didn't we involve the Envision Berwick people? Correct. Is it hasn't been done in a vacuum is why didn't the Envision Berwick people come to us? Why didn't the Trails people come to us and, and bring these concerns up? We never heard, if we don't hear from them, it's your how project, do we? It's your project that you're defining, okay? In, and in the course of that project evolving, the burden is on you, I feel, to make sure you have engaged or communicated with the appropriate parties. You, appro you approach DEP, you approach Army Corps, you approach all these groups that are very pertinent, and you know and, and, you know the, and, charge, it, and, and you know the charge of the of the Envision Berwick is to fulfill and implement, see that the master, the comprehensive master plan is implemented. So don't put it back on Envision Berwick and don't put it back on these guys. You're the applicant. We have, Frank. How how have we not we have not worked in a vacuum here. 
It's been public knowledge for more than a year. We've mentioned it at numerous selectmen's meetings. We talk about this. We talk about the access. We talk about taking the Estabrook School down. We is, didn't. I, I don't want to. We don't need to go over if, all that again. Well, I mean, well, you're the one that brought it up, Frank. I brought it up. I brought it up because the first time this planning board saw it was May second. And I tried to get plans because I was interested in trying to put the working the Portsmouth partnership back together and see if we can make everything work up there. And I tried to get plans. And I got the old sketch plan that they used at the August meeting, but I didn't get anything with any detail. And in January, February, March, I was told that they were not going to release any documents until they were complete. They didn't want any partial documents out there. So the first set of documents that came out that I got, I'm assuming the planning board got, was April 14th, mm -hmm. two weeks before they came in and made the presentation. So to sit there and say it was done in a vacuum, I'm not saying it's done in a vacuum. I'm just saying that that information wasn't forthcoming until the 11th hour on, on, on May 2nd. And the very issues that we're talking about here tonight are the same ones that were brought up by the planning board at that meeting. And, we, and, 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 and none of the has been addressed since. Four months ago. We have been addressing it. We have been addressing it, Frank. How have you? Say, how can you say we haven't no, you're, been addressing it? You're, you're, when you're we, addressing it by saying it, it doesn't preclude us doing it in the future. Yeah. Well, you know what I, I look at? I mean, maybe it's the engineer in me, but there's a wealth of information out there about that site now. We have wetlands. We have wetlands flagging, all right? We've got soils, we understand the water table out there. We got a lot of information. We got ground control. We're going to have, we're going to have the building staked out, I'm assuming, for the fifth. We should have that fire pond or that detention pond, I should say, staked out as well. Because I'm really not going to spend any time walking around the old basketball court. I'm going to be going through the woods over by the detention pond and just see how wet it is. I'm glad it's raining. I want to see how wet it is. I want to see, does it have any merit to put a path through there, five foot, six foot wide gravel path? And if it has some merit, and you can see where all the wetland flaggings are out there already, so you know what you're dealing with from a wetland in, impact and permitting, if it has some merit, put it on the drawing as a path, all right? Now it has some standing. Okay, it will have gone through DEP, it will have gone through Army Corps, it will have gone through everybody, and it will know that at the time we were putting this town property project together, we had the foresight to plan for a trail here or a trail there. This, that, yeah. And all I'm saying, I mean, I was the one that said a line on the paper would suffice, make me happy. But nobody has put a single line on a paper to address the questions that came up back on May 2nd. And that's my big concern and, is nobody's and, made that effort. And you just brought up, you just brought it up, Frank. Until we do a site walk, but until fine. we do a site walk, we cannot determine where a line on the plan goes. Well, we get a line on the paper after September 5th. Is, we will see. All right. But, so but, I, then again, just... but then again, just to bring up just something else Frank said, is, you know, a five or six foot wide gravel path along the wetlands now you're talking about engineering you're talking about permitting you're talking about design we had a boy and, scout build a penny scout pound, pound trail so come on come on, come on. It, it, you're, you're, you're it, exaggerating it really no, everybody no, is, 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 right. is there's a big difference you're between like putting Steve. the trail through penny pond and putting the trail through an area where we have DEP permitting now we have army corps of engineer permitting now it, it Perfect time to do it, now. Yeah. Now, it's perfect time to do it. Has Army Corps and DEP come out here and done their site walk? Yes, they have. When did they come out? I don't know. Can well, we get the field notes from their we site We will, walk? Is, again, until we do or we a put site it, walk. Or, or we, we put it around where the police department is, where it, people already walk down through there, where they walk around the back of the cruisers. Until we get on the site and see how can we put a line on a piece of paper. All right, can I just have two minutes, just two minutes, so, uh, First of all, so Steve, the town manager, got an email from Landry French Construction, and they asked Steve whether or not they could 
start the site work early prior to the execution of the GMP and prior to, and this is all pending on the DEP permits. This project could be approved next Thursday night. And I know that, you know, Steve was worried that, we, you know, we were going to be kind of like the stand, you know, because he said this is, this is going to cost us more money. Each month we delay, this will put this project, will cost the town more money. We're not going to be the delay for that. This project could be approved next week at the, at the, at the meeting after the site walk. So after I go to the site walk, I know what I'm going to propose is those two conditional uses to be put onto this application, all right? And whether or not the planning board wants to go along with that and vote on that, they can vote on that if they decide to. They're on the application. We approve the application. If you disagree with it, you could go to the Board of Adjustment, and that's how you get Appeals, them removed. Right. Board I have of a Appeal. Yeah. Um, Board of Appeal. Hypothetically, if we put those conditions on the plan, we, um, uh, yeah, uh, we as in the universal we, the town, okay. those mm -hmm. conditions go on the plan, and then the fire station is built, and then we go out there and we see the actual you know, the actual construction as it's finished and it is decided that it's just not safe to put a path there, but it may be somewhere else or, you know, yes. up to decision, then that can be changed or removed later. It has to later. come back yes. to the right. planning board, yes. But, but that decision is not final. It, it's, it's, still, it's still adjustable if there is an issue that, can, that needs to be addressed. Correct. Okay. But you have to bring it back to us. The town does. The town has yes. to come back and uh, are they willing to come back? Who knows? And, it, I, and I think we're all logical that if we, after it's the whole thing is built and we're, and I go for a walk back there and I see a fire truck, you know, going past me at 20 miles an hour around a, a corner there into Sullivan Street, the uh, you know, however fast they're going to go leaving there, I think that, yeah, this would bring up some type of issue, but it's just to keep the access there. We can adjust this later, but there's nothing that would be in the plan without, I feel without these conditional uses yeah. that would just leave that there and then we then we can come back and address it then afterwards yeah then we can come back there's nothing tom you and i drop dead tomorrow and you know what and there's nothing Praise in the plan the <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing in the plan then it's it's a game over yeah and i honestly after four months of the same thing i mean the town basically saying not going to happen we're not doing it four full months of this of us bringing up the same suggestions and and us moving and and making up well we could do this we could do this we're the ones you're supposed to be the ones that are that are trying to make the plan happen but you're not we're the ones trying to make the plan happen here so the reason that we have to put conditions on this plan is because we don't trust you because you don't you're unmoving right now it's it's like <clears throat> trying to move a, a concrete pillar and we're moving around it instead of instead of you moving your own pillar. So we don't trust. I'm I'm going to speak for myself. I do not trust the town of Berwick right now to fulfill anything unless we have it as a condition. I will not vote yes on this application unless those conditions are in there. So so you're saying that full access on Logan Street and Sullivan Street is part of the condition. No 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 conditional. It's just full access. Period. Do you want for it conditional non, or for not? <laughs> for non-motorized vehicles. And the green space, and keep the green non space motorized open. Vehicle, uh, motorized vehicles are prohibited. Pedestrians and bicycles are not at this point. So it is, so is, you're going against the, what the chief of police and the chief of the fire department consider safety issues. No, we're not. It's, no, Tom, not. I told you, I, I told you, I gave you the analogy. I gave you the analogy. I spent yeah. five years at the Coast Guard Station in, Port, in Newcastle, yeah. and I had a state park going through my base that people had to stay on a blue painted line going out to the Fort Constitution. And I did not like it, but it was for the greater good because there was easements, there was arrangements made, and I had to deal with them. I had to deal with them. I don't want, I don't, I, I can't envision people walking through the parking lot where firefighters are parking their cars and walking through at all hours in the night. I don't envision a, a, a path going through there, but there's other areas to do it. At least let's put it out there now that we can do this well, and it, then we come well, back. Well, okay, is we can do that. But is your wording of all access from Logan and Sullivan Street is open? Is Can we restrict it to not the paved way? Is because that's where. Yeah. Well, where are you going to have a? Are you going to have a little bit of a gravel? 
or or they have uh, we can that they, they people have to yield to vehicles leaving there emergency vehicles is we can do well, that too it is but still is the the public safety officers in our town have come forward and said that they don't want people walking on their paved ways. It's so weird. Again, South Berwick but there, has, there's South Berwick people, has people but there's walking already, right there's through already there. already people doing that out in front of the police station now. Yeah, and the fire station now. There's, there's already a, there's people a ice cream stand right Is next to the fire station. Right now? People are walking back and forth. We in have front an of. apartment building that shares a parking lot with the with the yeah. with the police I department. Mean, I, now. I think it's pretty clear that what the position the planning board is it taking is. in light of the comprehensive plan and everything else that supports the ordinances and, and the like, the burden is on you guys, the applicant, to come in with something that, that you can live with, that you know we can live with. The burden is on you. It's not for us to decide and do, do your work, but I, I agree. When I'm out there on the site, I'm not going to be walking on the basketball court. I'm in the woods or I'm up behind the police station looking and at the lay an of the land. And as an engineer, Frank, you've dealt with wetlands. You know the restrictions along with wetlands and things. But it's, it's permittable. It is permittable, but it costs money also. Don't don't it's, keep going to the money issue, all right? Don't keep all right, going to the money it, issue. The money is a big thing. Is That's what I am that's elected to. That's what I am elected to watch in this town, is the money. We're not asking you to build it. No. Not asking, the, the money's not on the table right now. It's called, it's just proposed. Right. Well, what do you yes. have? So, uh, my name's Kevin. Um, Kevin Gray. And, you know, we talked, or I've heard some comments about, you know, the town voted, the town voted, um, you know, myself when voting for it. And I know talking with other people is one of the major reasons why the town wanted it in the downtown area was for that community facing and that community peace. And by restricting access is totally against what I think the town really voted for. If the town wanted it to be this closed off nobody going to we would have voted for it for cemetery road yeah um but we didn't because we see communities like dover portsmouth south berwick uh wells who have their fire stations in the heart of their communities and it's it's a place where people go they have meeting areas there they have meeting rooms for for the towns people to go to. They have health clinics at a lot of fire stations around the country where that's where people go for their health care. When, you know, I mean, these are, this is a spot where people should be open and willing to go to, not one that can't go down this road and no, we don't want access over here. I understand the safety piece. I've read through what, you know, the fire station, you know, the code, the road size. And if we're truly about fire safety, and about the safety of that road, then we should blow that road twice the size. If safety is really the concern, we should blow it twice the size that it's proposed to be. And that's... I think we all know what the real concern is, and it's money. But that's not our concern. When a developer comes to us and they want to put in an apartment complex, and we say, okay, well, you know, your neighbors want some screening on this side, and they say, well, I don't have the money. Well, that's not our problem. So go find the money or find another way to screen your neighbors. That's your problem. Tom, I'm not, I'm not arguing the merits of the, the actual building. I'm not saying like, I think we need one bay in, as opposed to four. It's just keep making sure that there's access and then we can come back here with the conditional use application. If you want to put a dog park in, a solar array, if you know what, that path doesn't quite really make sense right now coming up over here, let's put it over here by the police where they park. We'll put a fence up over here and people can come up that. That's it, that's it. This can get approved next week. This is not that, uh, this is perception out here that the, the planning board is, is the one who's like putting the kibosh on this plan. It, it's, it's not the case. That's not the case at all. It's really not. And, and the, DEP, the DEP has to approve that plan before shovel goes in. We can't approve it. And, and then have you guys start construction. It, it's the DEP, so I mean that, Email was moot. That was a moot point. And I just have a clarifying question for the board in regards to the sidewalks. Um, I know that was brought up on one of the last meetings. So is based on what I've read and the limited knowledge I have of it, is, if this was a separate applicant, the sidewalks would be required. And part of this application for conditional use is to not have sidewalks, correct? 
Well, they have sidewalks no, in front of the sub, building. It's not a subdivision. Okay. So this is, but uh, this is not a subdivision. But even in the when I was the I comprehensive mean, plan and which is another issue, but we'll bring that up at a different time. The comprehensive plan and the downtown vision <laughs> stated that any new building should have sidewalks. I believe this. And this is said. Based well, on these th these buildings will. These buildings yeah, will have with, with the, except, with the exception yeah. of the access road. Just the and access we were, road, the we one out to Logan Street, Will? That and that, no, that won't. That is part of, you know, we could, we could sit here and have a discussion about sidewalks, and we have, especially when Paul Bovers was on this board. And the reason that we, we voted for, for those waivers, because the roads were not engineered to support sidewalks. They weren't. They were not engineered yeah, that way. Yeah, you can't. You couldn't we put can't, a sidewalk We, we couldn't require to. a builder to do a $100,000 infrastructure project to connect stormwater drains on Old Pine Hill Road. It was just, and I even talked to the town Why manager not? about this. Why not? Why not? Because Same reason we can't would have, get you to would pay for failed. a trail. The project would have failed. Then it, it's not your problem. That's his money problem. That's what you just told well, me. And we even <laughs> asked the town planner. That's what you just told me. There's, 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 told me that there's nothing it, it, that says. You don't have $100,000 There's nothing, that, there's nothing that says problem. in the land use ordinance that we have to require a, a builder to do a, an infrastructure project to connect to stormwater drains, to sewer and town water. Yes, we have our, our, our distances. But there was nothing else for that. There, there was nothing. And so we've compromised on some other things, keeping some open space. And that's what we're trying to do right now. So you don't want to put a, you don't want to put a, a sidewalk going down Sullivan's, or the pathway going to Sullivan Street. Then leave it open for access so people can walk on the shoulder or on the pavement and then yield to an emergency vehicle. Is this this is we, in the village district. Do we have? Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought. Um, but do we have numbers on the amount of accidents? The property line, or if you build anything back, it's supposed to be public. Isn't that we have what? Do you have, has any numbers been provided on the amount of accidents that have occurred within where the fire station is now? We've had traffic studies, yes. I don't, I know, not, not traffic I studies, yeah, just actual seen. accidents. Well, well, no, we've had traffic studies which have cited those. Cited I don't, those, I don't okay. have them on me. I mean, there was, there was a couple intersections primarily Wilson, School Street. Cumberland Farms area, they, that Cumberland was the Cumberland Farms one. area and then at the bridge. No, I meant in front of the fire station, specifically. There was now, none where reported, it is now. yeah. None reported, over how many years? And there was a couple reported on yeah. 236. 50 years? So 50 oh, years. that fire station, Tom? 50 years. 50, 50 years, miles. and we don't have any data of any accidents in front of it. That's right, okay. It, it, it is, again, I don't disagree with access. I disagree with your wording on that conditional use. Well, now that's we're getting somewhere. <laughs> is that access it, is non-motorized <coughs> and pedestrian traffic will be allowed on the access, for all access from Logan Street and Sullivan Street. Yeah, it says all right of ways into this property from Sullivan Street and Logan Street can be restricted for motor vehicle use. However, no restriction will be placed on pedestrians and or non-motorized vehicles. And that goes right to the heart of, of the comprehensive plan from the pedestrian hub action item. So the burden is on you, the applicant, I think. I, I'm glad Dave offered something up because it's not, sometimes it's easier to edit than to generate. The burden's on the applicant, I think now, knowing that those are the directions, the general direction the planning board is going to come in with conditions you can live with that addresses the, the pedestrian access through the site that could be a hub type of an area. Burden's on you guys. So how about a conditional use is that after the construction and the building is operating and as a conditional use is we look at it then and and i have no problem i have no problem I with that condition provided you have made a, 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 an, an effort at this juncture in the project to put a couple of lines on the paper so we know okay. where we're at to i don't try because we don't trust you no no or i don't I, trust you. <laughs> okay after the conditional use after, if, after if, the if yeah. occupancy permit things are not working Steve and you come back to the planning board and say things are not working. Can we revisit this? Let's open up this application again and change change the, these plans. This is not it, working. It, it, why don't we put it that once it's op operating and up, you, you can name a committee now to look at this, to look at the access, to do that. You know, why don't you do it that way well, rather wait a than it's, work backwards? You're the applicant. 
Again, I, I'm well, just I'm, asking I'm, you as the. I'm, I'm, I'm asking is 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 that something that's acceptable? Tom, if we if if I recommend putting these two conditions in there and we we vote we vote this plan com complete at our next meeting next Thursday, I mean, are you going to go to the the BOA? It, I can't I can't answer that because we haven't reached that point. Yet. Okay, I mean, I'm going to propose after the site walk. After the, After site, the walk. site walk, and if I still feel the same way, I mean, I've walked that site countless times this summer, right? And, I, I, and I've seen some stakes out there. I kind of have a vision of where things are going, but the, after that just, walk. Just so you know, those stakes were where they did the. The, the soil test, samples. Yeah, yeah those, okay. those have nothing to do with the building. I'm not saying I'm going to definitely do it, but then after that, if I come back and say, I still feel this way with these two conditional uses. And then we, t we well, go I think forward. We, I think we agreed to the, the, the other one that it be left as open space until a conditional use be approved to change it. You know, not recreation space, but open space. Okay. Is that, I don't have a problem with that. And I have we have a definition for open space in our land use ordinance because I want to make sure that if we're calling it open well, the space. Only, the only thing I would caution there is we have set up impact fees. Right for open space and recreation. And to use those monies, you're up against the 10 year window, correct, from when you collect them. But you're also collecting them for a certain use from the, from the developer or whoever. I wouldn't want to call it open space. I would want to at least couch it in the, in the framework of recreation and open space, only because it allows us now, if we want to put a splash pad up there or, or something along that line, or, or just a venue for an outdoor theater kind of a thing. And we're going to use recreation money to put in the infrastructure or use the impact money to put in the infrastructure for that. Then I don't want our hands tied either. So I, it's got to say both recreation and open space. public space? Or public space. We have a definition okay. for that. It, it, uh, it, What's I, the definition I, of public I, space? I will object to calling it recreation space. What's okay. it, well, here's well the we don't we have, have a def definition for that. We have to use a term that we have a definition for yeah. because so otherwise public it's... public space? So public space is a gathering place or part of a neighborhood, downtown, or other area within the public realm that helps promote social interaction and a sense of community. Examples of public spaces may include, but are not limited to, plazas, town squares, parks, and outdoor restaurant seating. I think public space. We're not going to put a restaurant. No, there. no, no. But I think public space <laughs> well, kind of. Well, they might want a hot dog stand. Or yeah. Something. But I, hey. <laughs> I but agree. I public public space, space is, is a very good example. Then, a very good definition. For Can that. you use? Impact fees for public space. That's a depends on if we're going to use it for recreation purposes. Select or open space. Mm -hmm. o op for open space is purchasing open space. Yeah. It's not for use of open space. It's for purchasing open space. I think we're better off using public space. We don't have a definition for open space, so we're not. We can't use it unless we. What do you got? It. I said a question because just with Frank talking about when the timeline was and with the town committee building committee and everything so we're talking about budget was there ever a talk of a budget for um you know that gravel path on the side of that or is it just said it's not safe so we're just not going to look at that at all in the budget process we the budget the budget was looking at renovation of the police department and building a fire department it wasn't for any other so the road the access road is not part of the budget no the access road is but it's not but you just said it's not for the build. It's just for the building itself. Well, the building, the site work. Right. So I'm saying, is there, was there ever part of the budget of the sidewalks for that path? Was it ever talked no. about to say how much is it going to cost? You're talking about it's all this money and all this budget. You know, we gotta, the, we're nickel and dime in us here. What is the actual possible cost? We don't even know. It could be it, it's not that much. No, but we're not no, even. No, no, no. Let me, let me tell you about it. Is the path out, the, the roadway out to Sullivan Street is, crosses a huge wetland area. Mm -hmm. Is one of the reasons the town bought the extra piece of property from the Wedgwood development. Right, okay. So we could actually shift that a little bit so that we weren't impacting the wetland because we're bumping up right at the, the, the boundary of where we would have to go for the next tier of okay. DEP permits, which is very expensive. So, no, that was never considered because we didn't want to bump up against that and have to go for the more expensive DEP permitting. As, as it is now, is you're allowed to disturb up to 10,000 square feet, Frank, is it? 
yeah. is, is uh, and you know, and also so when what, you look what's... at when you look at the plan of where things are sited and situated is it's not just the pathway that crosses the wetland. The wetland actually comes up from or down from Logan Street. That's the intermittent stream that comes down through there. Sure. It's actually part of you know drainage from Penny Pond, I believe. But yeah. it, is the uh, town exempt it, is the um, there's a seventy five foot setback from their delineation of wetlands for anything on the project. The dumpsters, parking, buildings, sure. anything like that. So it squashes that site down even more to what we can use. So we're very limited as the area we can use as it is. And by including an extra five feet on that pathway down through there, which was, I think, over 300 feet, is that would have impacted more of the wetlands and, and right. cross that boundary, pushing us into the next. You have a guesstimate of what that cost is for that permit, or did they just said no? Um, I, th I think uh, back in the springtime, it was like tens of thousands. Tens, tens well, of thousands. Well, do they charge a fee based on the square foot of impact? I'm not sure how that goes. You know, well, it's right. been a while since I've <clears throat> dealt with a lot of that stuff, but the point is, is that is the town exempt from those kinds of fees no. as well? No, is so. uh, no, and as I said, is 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 we have to go through the state DEP, but also the Army Corps of Engineers is involved. You know, so there's there's two entities looking at all of the impacts on the wetlands, and and actually is uh, is uh, I was told that there were going to be some restrictions on cutting trees until winter time because sure. of the brown bat population in that area. Right. So, oh, yeah, I mean, another yeah. restriction on you know, what we can and cannot do. Can, can right. we I get, my question is like, so we, this was brought up as a, as a question in May, right? I'm trying to follow the timeline. Yeah, the, like and May then second. nothing was ever asked for actual budget or how much it is. So you're saying it's tens of thousands, but we haven't gotten an actual quote or... Oh, they, there, is, there is, I don't have it with you know, me. You're right, no. but so they said yeah. this is, if you're going to do this much bigger, it's going to be this much more. Exactly. And, 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 uh, and also is, you know, talking about, you know, whether we're widening that pathway and everything, is the engineering and the fill and everything, that was all looked into. And as it is, is the site work fee is astronomical. It, it's... It's, it's huger than anything that we even imagined. Right. It's over eight hundred thousand dollars just for the site right now. Tom, I've actually, you know, I've, I've I've actually moved past the whole thing about a proposed trail for right now, and that's why I put in there that that open space, public space. public space, so that we can come back. So that if the town and and if the rec and and trails and and waterfront comes back and says we really want to put a path in here now and Dennis comes in here and Dennis has got some money that he found somewhere for a grant or whatever and like he was talking about the other night that conditional use allows the town to do that 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 first one right there because we've left it open and in the meantime we've left open Sullivan and Logan Street in the meantime and if it doesn't work then we come back and then then we can make some type of change to that those are the only two things. Those are the only two things I have. And I'm not saying that right now that I'm totally sold on them until we do the site walk. And then we come to the site walk. If the board agrees to those conditional uses, it goes on there. We vote on it. It gets approved. If the town has an issue with it, then they go to the COA. That's it. I mean, that, there's nothing else on that plan that I see, from my point of view, that, has an, that there's an issue. So... I never did get a direct answer for my my suggestion of putting a conditional use in there of you know restricting access during the construction and up until it's operating and then looking at access. You know, I think I think condition, conditional yes conditional use for a uh, 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 condition of approval for restricting it during construction is is reasonable, but I don't think because we're we're not going to be back here afterwards. You guys put up a fence. We're, uh, we're not going to be back here afterwards. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to be back here afterwards. It's going to get lost in the mix. We're going to forget about it. We can come back here if yeah. there's a problem. 
Yeah. Unless you tie it. We can put, or, or you, can, you can pull an emergency ordinance as a selectman and restrict access to that road. I mean, unless you tie it to the certificate of occupancy issuance. I mean, because they can't occupy the building until the code officer gives them that. You know, and if, it, if, if, if you follow along what Tom was saying, well, let's see how it all goes and let's talk about it afterwards, then let's make sure we have that meeting with you before the certificate of occupancy is issued. And then we can sit here and someone's going to get a black oh, because, eye. Because if we don't have the certificate of occupancy, it's not going to be operating. It is, I suggest we wait until it's finished and operating and then come back and visit it. The reason I wanted to have this meeting is because there's a lot of emails going back and forth that I didn't want to share with the board because I didn't want to hold the meeting via email. So that's why I just I, I held the meeting tonight with my proposals for those two conditional uses that maybe when we go out there for the site walk on Thursday next week that we can all kind of think about them in the back of our head. And that, that, was, that was solely, I didn't want to just email everybody on the board and say this is what I'm thinking. Cause that by, by Tuesday, can we have the wetlands report in mapping and who did it? The, the, SEW, the SW Coal Soils report and the geotechnical piece with it that would show the water table and other concerns out there. And obviously any updated site plans that you guys have as a result of grading or whatever. Can we have all that by Tuesday so we can get a chance to look at it before we go out there on Thursday? Because I, 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 I think there's a lot of value in those documents. You paid for them. There's a lot of value in those documents that can go a long way in helping to answer a couple of these little questions that we still have. And I'd like to just see that information. Um, I'm not the engineer. I'm not the architect. You're the applicant. I, you can I, ask I, them. I can't ask them. It, is I, as far as having them on Tuesday, I can't guarantee that because you know if we're, we're supposed we to have ahead? a meeting tomorrow. But you know, these is, that, is that Todd Gammon? He, he's the engineer, right? He's Blaze. He, he, yeah. he, he's doing the site, the civil engineering. Yeah. Is uh, you know, and, the, and, far, and then the uh, you know the architect is Port City and Andy. So this. Uh, that, that's all question. that I have. That's all that I have. I just have. have a question out of pure curiosity is, have they looked at putting solar on the roof of the fire station and police stations? I'm not sure why we would take up green space with solar panels when we have lots of roofs. It, well, is we, we, uh, we, we uh, have looked at it is we're not putting it on now because of cost restraint. Right, right. That and I understand. Uh, it, it, but, you know, is the, as I said at our other meeting, yeah. our other meeting is one of the reasons we talked about doing a solar array back there is because to have all the, on the fire station roof, the police department roof, and a solar array back there is then we can use, it's easy to have them all consolidated in one area rather than spread throughout town. Right. Is, and then... <clears throat> The idea for the town is by doing these solar arrays, we get the energy not only for the fire and the police, but is the way the current law is, we can apply any extra towards nine other town accounts so that it would be paying for the electricity here, paying for the electricity at the sewer, uh, the, at the public works, at the water department, things like that. That's why we're looking at I'm really a bigger solar ar yeah. array. I'm no. interested in that. And um, when you do come or if wherever you go with yeah. all that, it would be good to have the actual figures. Because the way I look at it, like we live in Maine, we don't get a hell of a lot of sun up here. And I know I've got clients that have solar on their roofs, but I'm not, I don't know enough about solar arrays. But it'd be interesting to see how much that actually does generate. I it mean, is, um, is it really going to pay for not, uh, not those I know two the things? Town, I, well, accounts? I know the town of Durham, they have a solar field and all, it, it's actually in Lee, and mm -hmm. all, everything that they have there supplies the whole, all the buildings in the town of Durham. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. You know, the, as far as the efficiency of the solar, it's yeah. come a long way. It's come a long way. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're much more efficient. The way they're set up is, is if once it used to be as if one solar panel got some shade on it, then all of them would be decreased right. their output. Now it's not that way with the microcircuitry. If they get shade in one, all the rest are still full power. Wow. So is. Um, can can I ask a question that? And I was going to ask it of the Landry French people um, at the site walk. But, and, and, and this kind of goes to my point when you start reading some of the notes here about $85,000 for winter condition allowance and stuff like that. We're saying that if we 
don't bid it now and we bid it next year, it would go up. Well, we don't know if it would go up, okay? Um, I'm playing off of what Mark Pendergast said at the Selectman's meeting that the DOT withheld awarding two big projects because they were two, two and a half million dollars beyond what the reasonable number should have been because everybody's plate is full. Can we ask Landry and French what their opinion would be is if we bid the project now within whatever you want to pick for a start date, October 15th or whatever, or and then a second bid to see what the cost would be is if we bid it now and they started April 1st when the frost comes out of the ground or whenever and get the full advantage of the whole well, thing. We've had those discussions. Well, you've had them, but uh, I mean. It, well, is we've had those discussions and, and talked about is, um, is the feelings have been that, you know, is the cost of labor may go down, but the cost of materials will probably go up. And so is, is the town's position is still that we need to start this as well, soon as well, possible. Well, what I'm saying, I just, we, just got a, we just got an email f from Mason at Landry French Construction, and this came in today. He says, although we would prefer to start sooner, I would recommend starting in October versus pushing it to next spring as costs would most definitely go up over that six months period, and we can't afford that at all. So we, we have asked that, we've looked at it, and is we plan on going forward as soon as possible. But why not bid it so that they've got to give you construction costs for a start date of this or a construction co and a construction cost for a start date of that? I and see what the real some, some of it has already been put out for bid. I don't think and, you would get that by mid-October. And, and we're not going to, it's not going to, we're not going to do that, Frank, is we're going to go ahead with our schedule as planned. They have, it says they have $85,000 for winterization I for this that, project. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's it. I don't want to drag this on all night. I think this was a good discussion. At least we agreed on one thing <laughs> on there. And we can, I look forward to the site walk. I mean, we're doing it at 5. Should we do it sooner? Do we need to be Seriously? up there at 4.30? <laughs> you know? at, at the I August 15th meeting, you it said if we had any questions of the chief, we could speak to the chief. I talked to Steve. Steve gave me permission to go talk to Dennis, and I spent some time with Chief Plant, and he satisfied a lot of the questions that I had, which I figured hearing him from the answers from him would, would do that. So I just wanted you to know I spent some time with, with Chief Plant asking him specific questions. Has anybody got anything else? I said one last thing. Um, Tom, the town's position, you're saying that they want to restrict access till after the project is done, and then, uh, then when it's operational, then we can see and then maybe open access if, we've, if the town sees fit. Can't it go the opposite way? If the town feel, it really feels there's a public safety need, can they come in and say, we need to shut this road down to no access at all? Okay. Is that a possibility? That's what we're proposing, isn't it? Yeah, that's what we're proposing. Right. The town might not like it, but that's what so, we're so thinking about proposing. The police chief and the fire chief can come in and say after the fact and say, you know what, we got 26 kids every two minutes riding down this road. We got to shut it down. Versus what you're asking to say, no, no access, but we'll look at it when it, after the fact. I guess I'm that's just... the question. <laughs> that, the question is, that's that's what we're trying to go for. Right, I'm saying I'm, just for those two streets. Yes, yeah. correct. But and I'm asking the town's opinion. Why is it that you can't have access where you, could, if it's really truly becomes a public safety concern, you can come back and say we need to shut that road down? Yeah. I'll have to talk to the rest of the team. You know, I, I can't answer for you know the chief or anything like that. But it's, you're answering questions now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. But as far as the safety issues and stuff is that as I said I'm deferring to the chief about that so is, uh, my my kid my 16 year old took his driving test in the in like where the fire trucks come out of at South Burrook that's where all the kids take their driving tests they pull in with no licenses they pull out with no licenses and they're driving in there right de right there I ran into chief Joe Roussel while I was sitting there Not literally no, but I was, but I was literally sitting there, right, in, right in where the fire trucks come in and out. Um, was sitting there with a bunch of other parents, and and was asking him. And I know that um, my, you know, my interaction with him was poo pooed because that wasn't our fire chief, but it was somebody who is working 
in a similar situation in an operation that's been there 20 years, he said, it's fine, there's no problems. And I know that I know that we trust his opinion and value it because he worked for us for so many years. And my, well, my question is like, so the hang up that, of, that you have as the town stance of Dave's amendments to that is that you want to close access to the road for all uh, the, roadways. the roadways. Yeah. So to move this project forward, because timing is an issue, to me, as a town's person would say, the town should just, okay, we're gonna open the roads up for non-motorized access, and if it really becomes an issue, we can always come back and shut it down. It's easier to do that than it is to reopen it up once it's shut down, to me. Yeah. That's how I feel. The town's unwillingness to work with us as a board is a direct demonstration of that and is why we would not consider that as, as a condition. Right, it just seems I don't to for four months. We, 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 we're not working with you. We are working with you. It is, we've gone from having a sidewalk up the access road, which we determined was not going to happen, is, the, is, as I said, is I'm not opposed to having access through there. I just want it to be safe access, and I want it to be, we I want it to take into walking. account after it's operational and we see what happens there. So why can't we do it the other way? Yeah. We should do a site walk at South Berwick too, even informally or maybe, every, no, but I'm just saying everybody from the board, go look and walk around there, walk around I, their station. I'm just looking for some. I, I wish the select board would do that. I'm just looking for some assurance from our, safety people, our police chief, our fire chief, and our selectmen, that there is some buy-in to having pedestrian access through there. And if that means it's in a narrative, if that means it's in a condition, if that means it's a line on the paper, to me that shows that the applicant, the town, and all their department heads have some buy-in to what the planning board is trying to fulfill as a, as a requirement in the comprehensive plan. I haven't got to that point where I'm warm and fuzzy about that level of assurance and it's got to be put back on you guys, I think, to bring it, us to that point. Meet you Thursday. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. Thanks for coming, Tom.